Hello everyone, welcome to the introduction to mechanical industrial engineering class. Uh, this is the third video or this third part of the mechanical design part two. In this part two, we're already discussing the most common types of mechanical components that we shall be using as mechanical or industrial engineers, especially if we are assigned something or a mechanical system to design. So any machine or any mechanical system, it consists of certain number of mechanical components these mechanical components are working together to achieve the function of that machine. So the objective is to understand these commonly used mechanical components. And this is the objective of this part uh, two of the mechanical design. Over the last uh, two videos, we have discussed the uh, commonly used uh, mechanical components. We have discussed the clutches, the couplings, the brakes, the cam and follower mechanism, linkages, and other types of mechanism, chains, belt drives, different types of gears in addition to the, uh, yeah, we discussed the structural component, frame member, uh, members, bearings, axles, plants, fasteners, and seals. So all of these different mechanical components, as I mentioned, they are very important to understand how these functions are working, what is the function of each one, uh, how uh, how we are implementing or using these, uh, these um mechanical components in different applications. So one of the important and most common application for this mechanical system is the transmission of a car. Transmission, if we're gonna take about, talk about the gearbox, here we are talking about the gearbox of the car, how it works and what are the main components that be used for making the transmission of a car, this is gonna be the focus or the main objective of today's, uh, today's video. So, and we're gonna explain this first over the real wheel drive vehicle. We do have in general in the automotive application, we could uh, have like front wheel drive vehicle or rear wheel drive vehicle or four by four vehicle. Four by four, it means that the transmission or the power that comes from the engine, it will be directed directly to the four wheels of the car. So we're gonna say that this car or this vehicle it is four by four. But if it is just front wheel, and we have mentioned this once before, front wheel, it means that, that the transmission system will be connected to the two front wheels and there is no transmission is given or provided or power provided to the rear wheels. Rear wheels, they just rotating in that case, they are just rotating and moving as long as the car is moving and they're gonna stop rotation as long as the car is going to stop. But the thing that it, or the two wheels, in case that here I'm talking about the front wheel drive vehicle, in that case, the front two wheels who are the ones who gives power and motion to the to the vehicle itself. So the engine will be will transmit the power and motion to the transmission, and then the transmission will be connected to the operating element, which is the wheel. As we mentioned over the previous slides before, that we mentioned any that any machine it consists of three main parts. There should be an engine. There should be a, a source of power would be electrical motor or engine, in case that we are talking about the automotive application. And then we should have a transmission system that gives regulation and control of the speed, then we'd have operating element. So in, if we map this three, these three components, essential components over the car or over the automotive or, or, or a vehicle, definitely we should have a source of power, which is gonna be the engine. So that's why we'd have here engine. And then we should have the transmission. This transmission is just a gearbox that includes certain number of gear that give control and uh, regulation for the speed and control of the motion and the speed of this car. And then this transmission should be connected to an operating element. This operating element, it should be the wheel since we are talking about a car. So as I mentioned, if the transmission is connected to the two front wheels only, and the transmission or the gearbox is not connected to the two real wheels, just to the two front, this type of vehicle it is known as front wheel drive vehicle. And this is very common in any, in all, in many of the, the small sedan cars or the sedan car, the small ones, most of them, 90% of them, their two front wheels are front wheel drive vehicle, are, trans, are connected to the transmission system. But there are some of the other cars who are real wheel drive vehicle and usually, or in general, the rear wheel, wheel drive vehicles, they should be more powerful than the front wheel drives. For example, if we do have a big car, definitely it should be at least, it should be at least rear wheel drive vehicle. 
and, and, and to be more powerful and to give more torque and power to this car, it means that it should be four by four. So these are the three versions of cars, you could say in terms of the transmission and uh, of the different cars that we are using uh, these days. So the talk here is gonna be over the transmission system that could be used for the rear wheel drive vehicle. Nothing will be different, or there is no big difference between whatever it is, rear wheel drive vehicle or front wheel drive vehicle. The transmission part is gonna be almost the same, but the only thing is gonna be the, like the use of the differential and how we connect this transmission to the rear wheel, uh, wheels, this it will be the different thing. But for the front wheel, we automatically connecting the transmission to the two front wheels, okay? So, as going back to the general construction of any machine, the car or the vehicle is just a machine. We said that you should have source of power, which definitely is gonna be the engine. Then you should have a transmission system, which is gonna be this gearbox, this is the transmission. And then you should have a connection, and this transmission should be connected to the real wheels, which are the operating element. So for example, if I ask you what is the operating element for this mechanism or this diagram or this car, definitely it's gonna be the two real wheels. The two front wheels, they are not counted in that case as operating element. Why? The transmission is not connected to them. They are just giving support to the car, giving support to the car to move over the street. They are rotating as long as the car is rotating. Here I'm talking about the front wheel for a rear wheel drive vehicle. So this is a rear wheel drive vehicle, and this is the typical diagram of the transmission system for this vehicle or the engine and the transmission system. Also over the last video, we have discussed the clutch, and it's important. Importance, especially if we're gonna talk about the manual car, and this is the talk here. We are talking about the transmission of the manual car, and we're gonna explain how we are going to shift between the different gears, first gear, second gear, third gear, and so on, to give regulation of speed and torque and power to this car through this transmission system. So as you can see, the general construction for any real wheel drive vehicle, here I'm talking in general, for any real wheel drive vehicle, you should have engine, and this engine, it should include some pistons, as we explained over like this, animation here. This is gonna be like a typical shape from inside the engine itself. There should be some pistons that already connected. This is the camshaft that control the valves and the fuel and burning the fuel and the combustion generation to give push to these pistons. When these pistons are pushed and they are uh, like, like burning chambers, there should be here a crankshaft. This crankshaft, it will be connected to the transmission as already represented here in this diagram. So this is the crankshaft, this shape, this thing here, this is, this is the crankshaft. It is a specially designed shaft that it should be connected to the pistons. So there should be some pistons here who are connected. And as long as we're giving push to these pistons, this shaft is gonna keep rotating to give rotation to a flywheel. Flywheel, it is something like a big disc that is connected automatically or link it to this crankshaft. So once you switch on the engine, the crankshaft is going to rotate to give rotation to the flywheel, and if the clutch battery is not pressed, it means that the clutch is, clutch is connecting, as we explained over the last video, it means that you're already transmitting the power and motion from the engine and you're connecting to the transmission. So you're gonna find all the gears, you already connected and you're gonna find all the gears within the transmission will be rotating, to give rotation to this shaft, at the end of this little small shaft, there should be here another coupling. This is a coupling that I'm talking about that we explained over the last video, like this one, like this typical coupling that we explained before, right? So this is a coupling that connects to a propeller shaft. Probula, I'm sorry, propeller shaft. This propeller shaft added the connection. This is what connects the transmission that basically or conventionally located in the front of the vehicle, and we should have a very long propeller shaft that connect to the real wheels of the vehicle. This cut here, this thing that is cutting, this is in, in terms of engineering drawing, if, because that this propeller shaft there is too long, so instead of drawing it like a single part with, a with its 
scale, so it won't gonna fit in the space of the drone, so we could cut, cut it here. But in the exact, this doesn't mean that the exact rail, propeller shaft, is cut. No, it is not cut, it is already one single piece, one single shaft that is connected. At the other end of the propeller shaft, there is another coupling which is gonna be typically this other coupling here. This is like coupling number two. This is coupling two, but there is coupling one here. This is coupling one. Coupling two is gonna be typically the shape like this one. This is the exact, this is the coupling number two that I'm talking about that connects then to the differential. As we explained, and over the last video, we explained that the differential contains set of bevel gears. The objective of this differential is to convert the direction of motion from that direction to this perpendicular direction to give rotation to these two wheels. So this is simply how this mechanism in general is working in a real wheel drive vehicle. If we are talking about a front wheel drive, we could give a, a rotation to the transmission and we connect it directly to the front wheel. And in that case, there is no need to use the propeller shaft or the differential. So the differential it is only used for real wheel drive vehicles in, in the back. There is There could be another differential, definitely. There is another differential for the front wheels, but this is used for steering. I'm not talking about this thing. I'm talking about the differential that is mainly used for the transmission motion, which should be the here when we talk about the real wheel drive. The typical shape for the differential, this is how it looks like in, in rail. But we mentioned that inside it, there are some bevel gear. This is the differential that I'm talking about. Make sense? So, this is another schematic which it should be the same, the same schematic of this diagram. As I mentioned, this is the engine part, and this is the camshaft. This is the camshaft that include all the cams that already distributed, and these are the valves or the followers for the cam that control the open and close the different valves. Like there is one valve for inlet, for the other one for air and oxygen to do like the compression. So you're gonna give, and these are the compression chambers that push the pistons. So you're gonna find one piston going down, the other one going up. So this type of motion, it is arranged to give kind of rotation to this crank shaft. So this is the crank shaft that I'm talking about. Once this crankshaft rotates, it's gonna give rotation to the flywheel. This thing is known as the flywheel. This is the flywheel. Flywheel is something like a wheel, like a big disc, some kind of. So this is commonly known as the flywheel that is connected to the crankshaft. This flywheel is connected or contains or somehow connected to the clutch. Once the battery is not pressed, this is the battery inside the car. And this is how it would be connected. It would be connected through, through some hydraulic and oil pushing things. And there should be some levers and some springs that are included inside the clutch. We said that this clutch, which is gonna be this typically shape of the clutch from inside, is gonna be like multiple plates, different things. So it is a device. This is the shape of the clutch itself. And it should be located, as we mentioned before, just beyond or next to the engine. It should be connected to the crankshaft. Once you switch on the engine, the crankshaft is going to rotate to give rotation to the flywheel. And as long as the clutch is connected, it will give rotation to this gear. So let us give numbers to this gear. If we give it a number like gear one. So what, what is happening here? Once you switch on the engine, this entire part, this is the transmission. This is the gear box. And this is the stick that you control shifting the gears, first gear, second gear, in, while you're driving the car. Make sense? So once you switch on the engine, the crankshaft, the camshaft is going to work for burning things, pistons are moving, crankshaft is going to rotate to give rotation to the flywheel, the clutch is connected. So this shaft, this thing, this is shaft number one. Let us give it a name like shaft SH1, for example. So this shaft number one is going to rotate. At the end of this shaft, there should be a gear. This gear is gonna be the input gear that gives motion to the transmission. This is like the connection between the transmission and the clutch system itself. Then once this gear number one is going to rotate, it's gonna give rotation to this gear, to this gear number two, this one. 
Then it's gonna give rotation. Once the gear rotates, it's gonna give rotation to the shaft. We said that the shaft gives support to the gear to rotate. So if the shaft rotates, automatically the gear is going to rotate that is supported on it. Or the opposite, if the gear rotates, definitely the shaft that mounted or fixed over uh, over a certain shaft, this shaft will rotate as well, right? So this shaft too, this is the second shaft, this is another shaft. And all of these multiple gears, so we're gonna get, say, for example, this is like gear two, this is gear number three, gear number four, gear number five, gear number six, seven, eight, eight gears over this red shaft. So this shaft includes eight, seven gears, and this is gear number eight. And we do have another gear, and we do have another gear, another gear, another gear, another gear, another gear. So all of these blue things are different gears. What is the type of this gear? It could be spar gear, it would be helical gear, either options. In many of the cases it is helical, it is helical, it is more efficient, so it is used in this system, but we can use also spar gears. But anyway, forget about the type of the gear. So in general, if, uh, if we decided to count how many gears do we have here, we do have so many. We do have, this is gear one that is connected to the first shaft that comes from the clutch. So once the clutch rotate, it's gonna give rotation to this shaft number one that gives rotation to gear one that gives rotation to gear two that is connected to it. Connected, it means mesh. We give it a name like mesh. Mesh, it means that two gears are engaged together. The tooth or the teeth of this gear are engaged to the teeth of the second gear and one can push the other to move. To move. So this is known as a mesh or engagement or connection of gears. Like these two gears are meshed together or meshed together. Make sense? So like one is meshed to, to two to give it rotation. Once two rotates, it's gonna give rotation to this shaft and these gears will be rotating together to give rotation to some of the gears here. Once these gears are rotating or one of them is rotating or some reason, you're gonna find the third shaft. Do you see this shaft? This is shaft number three. This shaft at the end of it, there is a coupling that connects the shaft that is already inside the gearbox. This shaft is located inside, it is not seen unless you open the gearbox. This shaft number three that ends here. Then after that, there is another shaft that is separate from this shaft that is connected to it through a coupling. This shaft is the propeller shaft, which is typically the same, the same like this shape. So this little small thing, this should be shaft number three that I'm talking about. Once this shaft, shaft number three takes a rotation and since it is coupled, coupled it means that it is connected to another shaft or another component with a coupling. This is why you are saying that this shaft is coupled to this shaft. Coupled it means it is connected through coupling. So we do have a coupling here that coupling this shaft three to the propeller shaft. And once shaft three rotates, definitely is gonna give rotation to the propeller shaft that is going to give rotation to this bevel gear in the differential part in the rear wheel. Once the bevel gear that this propeller shaft, there should be another coupling here at the end. As we explained before, there is another coupling here which connects to the differential. Once the propeller shaft rotates, it's gonna give rotation to this bevel gear, which is connected to another bevel gear to give rotation, or not just one, it is said, we said that at least you're gonna find five bevel gears inside, located inside this differential, that is gonna give rotation to this shaft to give rotation to the wheels. So, so this is in detail how this transmission is working. But still the question is how we could shift the gears, how we could shift between the first gear, second gear, and other thing. But before we move to that, how about if I de decided to dis disconnect the motion, to disconnect any new pushing or power or energy that comes from the engine. Now the clutch is connected. How could I disconnect it? Simply you're gonna press on the barrel. If you press on the barrel, you're disconnecting the clutch so you are disconnecting the motion to the shaft number one. This shaft, it will, it will not receive any new motion. It will not receive any new pushing. But this doesn't mean that it will stop. No, it's gonna keep rotating by its inertia. What does it mean inertia? It means that it has momentum to move. If this, if there is no pushing comes to this shaft, after a while it will stop automatically by itself. But it, 
the instant that you press on the clutch, this doesn't guarantee that this shaft or the transmission or the gears inside the transmissions are they are going to stop. No, they're gonna keep rotating by their inertia if you just keep it. And that's why this week's Ciblin, for example, if you press on the clutch while you're driving the car, do you think that, that the car is going to stop at the same instant of time? No, it's gonna keep moving. If you keep your foot on the clutch, and you leave the car to move by its inertia, by its momentum, is going the car is gonna keep moving for a distance that is going to stop by itself. Why? Because the transmission inside the car, the wheels, the entire car, it has inertia that pushes this gear to move despite that you are disconnected the motion coming from the, the engine. We pressed on the battery of the clutch, we disconnected the motion coming from the engine. There is no new motion, but still the car is moving. Why? Because of the inertia. After all, it's going to stop because of its momentum that it had been gained while we connected the clutch. Make sense? But for now, just to understand it, even you could say or imagine that this shaft, once you disconnect, assume that like shaft one is going to stop. But in physically, in reality, it won't gonna stop at the same instant you press on the button. It's gonna take time till it will completely stop back. Make sense? So this animation explains how things are working. As I explained, these are the cam. This is the, these are the different cams, and these are the pistons are moving. The crank is rotating. Give rotation to the flywheel, and the clutch is connected. Give rotation to all the gears. And there should be a stick here that used for shifting the gear between first gear, second gear, and so on to give rotation to shaft number three. Remember, this is shaft number three, that it should be connected then to the propeller shaft, then to the differential through some couplings, right? So here we are talking about, we are focusing on the transmission system. Let us go inside these different gears. Know how we could shift between first, second gear, and so on. Make sense? So, to explain, this is just a typical shape of the real propeller shaft, how it looks like. This is the propeller shaft, as again, it, would, it should be some coupling here. The coupling is not seen. This is just one single part for the uh, propeller shaft, how it comes, that include the coupling part. This, so the coupling is already uh, existing here, right? And there is another here part of the coupling. Then we can mount or fix this propeller shaft to the differential and the transmission in the front. Usually this propeller shaft, it will cover the entire base underneath the car. If you, if, the, if, if for some reason, if you have a chance to look to underneath any rear wheel drive vehicle, you're gonna find like a big shaft that moves and rotate, keep rotating as long as the engine is working. This shaft is the propeller shaft. And this propeller shaft, if, if it rotates, definitely the car is going to move. But as long as the car is already standing, not moving, this propeller shaft shouldn't be moving. So any for real wheel drive, if the propeller shaft has rotated, it means that the car is going to move anyway. Make sense? So let us here focus on the transmission system and understand how it works. Forget about this diagram on the right. Let us focus on this thing. So remember, just to recall the different shafts that we have discussed. What is this shaft one? This shaft one, that the, this is the one that is connected to the clutch, which should be this shaft. This is shaft one. So we're gonna give it one in terms of the Latin numbers. This is shaft one. This is shaft two. And this is shaft three, which should be then connected to the propeller shaft. So this is these are the three shafts. Shaft one, shaft two, shaft three. The red one, this is shaft two, shaft three. Definitely these, any two shafts, as we explained before, it should be supported, any shaft should be supported by two bearings. But the bearings are not drawn here. But let us figure out the other mechanical component, but definitely there should be bearings. So in the real transmission, any shaft, it is supported by two bearings. But in this diagram or this schematic, we are not drawing the bearings. The bearings are removed from the graph, but they should be there. So. We do have shaft one, shaft two, shaft three. These are one of the mechanical components. We do have gear one, which is the blue one that is connected or meshed to gear eight. We said mesh, it means connected. 
We do have another gear two that is connected to nine and gear three that is connected to 10, gear four that is connected to 11, gear five that is connected to 12, six connected to 13, seven connected to 15 and 14. So this part, it is three gears. I'm going to explain it with more detail. So skip this one for now, but anyway, just for now, understand that these are three gears, not just two gears. So that's why we have seven and 14, and there is in between, which is the yellow gear, in, in between it is 15. And I'm going to explain it, as I said, in detail. So we do have shafts, there should be some bearings, but they are not represented. Plus, definitely, since we are talking about gearbox, there should be some gears who are connected. So as you can see, for this transmission system, we do have every pair of gears are meshed together. Like eight is connected to, a, uh, one is connected to eight. Nine is connected to two. Three is connected to 10. It means that every two gears form a pair, form a couple. One, it sh one of them should be driver, the second one it should be driven. Driver is going to push the driven gear to rotate. The driver is going to enforce the driven gear to rotate. So we have driver and driven gear. Like for example, one and eight, one of them, it should be driver, definitely the other one is gonna be driven. Who is the driver, who is the driven? This is what we are going to figure it out. But the same thing for nine and two. One of them is going to be the driver, the second one is going to be the driven. The same thing, 10 and three, 11 and four, 12 and five. 12 and five, one is driver, the second one is driven. The same and so on for the other gears. Forgot about these seven, 15 and, uh, and, and, and 14 because this is a special mechanism that we are going to, to talk about. But in general, we do have one, eight, two, nine, three, 10, four, 11, five, 12, six, 13. Everyone, these are couples, bears of gears. One of them, it should be one of each couple. It's going to be driver. The second one is going to be driven. Make sense? This kind of mesh, this kind of mesh is known as constant mesh. Just to explain to you what does it mean constant mesh. Remember that I'm telling all of these details, all of these constant mesh over all of this gear just to know, to know how these systems are working for now, okay? So, what, what does it mean a constant mesh? It means that the gear, for example, if I said gear one and eight, they are constant mesh. It means that there is no any possible option for this mechanism that gear one will be disconnected from gear eight. All the time, gear one is connected to gear eight. So both are constant mesh, constant connection. All the time connected, like a permanent connection. They won't gonna be separated unless you remove one of them using keys and you have to stop the car. It means that there is something wrong and you are fixing the engine, uh, the transmission, make sense? The same thing applies to gears nine and, uh, I'm sorry, two and nine. Two and nine, they are constant mesh. What does it mean? It means that all the time they do connect it. The same thing, three and 10, they are constant mesh, four and 11, constant mesh, five and 12, constant mesh, six and 13, seven, 14, 15 are constant mesh. So all of these gears, all of every bear or cabin, they are constant mesh. All the time connected, we cannot disconnect anyone. Make sense so far? So we discussed that with our three shafts, there are some bearings which are hidden. We just give number to these gears, all of these gears we do have, they are kind of cables except the seven, 14, 15, this is like a special group of three, like a special group of three gears. Make sense? But th another thing that you should understand, just for this mechanism, just for this mechanism, that all of these gears are constant mesh. What does it mean, constant mesh? It means that every couple of gears are connected together including even this special group of 7, 14, 15, they are all the time connected together. They won't gonna remove from each other. What does it mean they are connected or mesh? It means that if any one of the bare 
we do have couples. Like for example, if gear one rotates, automatically gear two is go, uh, gear eight is going to rotate. If gear two or nine, one any one of them is going to rotate, the second one is going to rotate automatically. Why? They do have a constant mesh. Make sense so far? So how it works? Another thing that you should understand before we go to explain how we could shift the gear and these things. Like any shaft, we do have three shafts. Remember that we do have three shafts. Any shaft, it should receive the power and the energy through one gear or through one pair of gears and give this power and energy through another pair of gears. So I'm just gonna draw something very quick. So let us consider that you do have one shaft here. And over this shaft, there are there is one gear. Assume that there is one gear here. Excuse me if the drawing is not accurate, but assume that this is one gear. Over this side of this shaft, and over the other side, there is another gear. So how this shaft is going to rotate? So if we assume that this gear here, gear one, and this is gear two, so gear one is connected to another gear that was connected or fixed over another shaft. So this is like one shaft and there is another shaft down here. This is the main shaft that I'm talking about. So if we give rotation to gear zero, let us give it number zero. To gear number zero, gear zero will be driver to gear one. So once gear zero is going to rotate, it's gonna push gear one to rotate in the opposite direction. And we're gonna talk about these directions later. This, once this gear is going, uh, once gear one is going to rotate, it's gonna give rotation to the shaft. Once the shaft rotates, it's gonna give rotation automatically to gear number two. Why? Two and one, they are fixed to the shaft. K to the shaft, we give it an name as K, then I'm going to explain this point. So once gear two is going to rotate, it means that you already receiving, this is input power. How we could give motion and power to, to this shaft, the input, it comes through gear zero and one. This is cable of gears, pair of gears. This pair of gear works like input for the power. But this gear two is gonna give the power to another shaft here for another gear that is connected to a third shaft. So this gives, this is input, this is gonna be output. Any shaft, whatever it is, it should take power, have power, receive power, input power, and give power, output power through one bear, another bear. You got it? So it should have only one input, one output. Even if there are some other gears here, the other gears could be rotating, but they are not, they do have zero contribution for the power. They are not neither receiving or giving power. They just rotating with the rotation of the, of the shaft. But generally speaking, any shaft, whatever it is, it, can, it is allowed to give it power as input and take from it power as output from one bear and another bear. That's it. So if we're gonna look to the shaft two, let us just consider shaft two. How many gears over this shaft two? So many, we do have eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, forget about 14 for now. So at least we do have five and we do have the sixth, the sixth one, which is just a special mechanism, forget about it. So we do have five gears. There are only two gears who will be used. One of them will serve as input, the second one is gonna serve as output. How about the other three? The other three, we have five. So one will be input, the other one will be output. How about the other? The other will be keep rotating for nothing. You got it? So we do have here five gears. How we could shift, how we can control the take and give, the input and output between these different gears this requires clutches. We need to shift. For this mechanism, we need to shift between first gear, second gear, and so on. How we could do it, we are using here positive action clutches, or clutches in general. These clutches, we do have one clutch that is located between gear two and three, and there is another clutch that is located between gear four and, uh, four and five, 
and there is another clutch that is located between gear six, six and seven. These clutches, as already shown here in the figure, they are, they, every one of these clutch has three positions. The clutch it could be in the middle, exactly in the middle between the two gears. Let us just talk about this clutch one, this clutch between gears two and three. So it has three positions. One position that it would be between gears two and three. If it is in the middle, it means that it is disconnected. It is not connected to neither two or three. It is not connected to two. It is not connected to three. It's just in the middle. Make sense? The other position for this clutch that it could be pushed to connect with gear two and keep disconnected from gear three, just to be connected to one gear, which is two, just if it had been pushed to the left. But the question is how we could push this clutch through the stick. This is the benefit of the stick. When you shift things, when you are using in the manual car, shifting the stick or moving it, you are moving a clutch in many of the cases inside the car. You are not moving gears. In the conventional, in many, in most of the transmission systems, when we are moving the stick, we are not moving gears. We are not shifting gears. We are shifting clutches. We are moving sliding clutch. So the clutch has three positions. Depending on what, depending on the stick that you are moving. That's why you do have numbers over the stick, one, two, three, that indicate which direction that you have to move the stick to know exactly which, and this stick it is connected through these other bars to the different clutches inside the transmission. So when you shift, for example, to the first gear or second gear or whatever, you are moving a clutch in many of the cases. Unless you do have another transmission system, there are a few transmission systems that you physically moving a gear, especially if we are talking about the big car. The truck cars, we are moving gears. We are shifting gears in the truck cars. But if I'm talking here about the small sedan cars, we are moving and shifting clutches. But in the big car, clutches will not be efficient like moving gears. So that's why in the big cars, we are moving and sliding gears. Here we are talking about a small sedan car. In many of the cases, we're just sliding these clutches. So when you slide the clutch, it could be slide to the left to connect with gear two. This is gonna give one speed to the car. This is gonna give like one gear, first gear, second gear. It depends on which clutch is moving. The other third position, we said we have three positions for the clutch. It could be in the middle, so it will disconnect or it could be shifted left to connect to gear two or shift drive to connect to gear three. This is gonna give another speed. The same thing, this clutch in the middle between four and five, it ha if, if it is in the middle, it disconnect five and four. But if, it is sli if you slide it to the left, it will be connected to four. And in that case, you are giving motion to the car based on gear four. If it is slide to the right, it will be connected to gear five. And in that case, you are giving speed and motion to the car based on gear five. The same thing for the gear, the last clutch, the third one between six and seven. It has three positions, either in the, uh, in the middle or shifted to the right or left to connect with six or seven. It depends. So this is simply the function and how we shift gears inside the, for the transmission system, for this transmission system that used for sedan car. Basically for this one, we are not moving gears. We are moving clutches to connect or disconnect one gear and connect another one. Make sense? So this is one thing. Another important point that you should understand here, how this system is working. We do have lots of gear. If we're gonna go back here to this animation and just observe these gears, as you can see, all gears are rotating the same time. But as we mentioned, any shaft, it should take power from one side and give it from the other side. Input one, input one, output. Like if we are gonna talk about shaft one, shaft one takes power from the engine, from this side and give it to gear one. This is gear one, remember the numbers, and this is gear eight in the diagram, right? So this is shaft one. 
It's gonna take input from the engine through the crankshaft, the flywheel, the clutch is going to rotate. Shaft one is rotating. At the end of the shaft, gear one is rotating. Why? Because the shaft is rotating. Gear one is fixed. It's cade. Cade, it means fixed to the shaft. Fixed, it means it is not welded. It is fixed through key, as we explained before. So once the shaft rotates, it's gonna give rotation automatically to gear one. So what does it mean this? Once you switch on the engine, the engine pistons are moving, crank is gonna move, the clutch is connected, shaft one is going to rotate. Shaft one is going to rotate, gear one is going to rotate. But in the meanwhile, we said that gear one, gear eight, they are constant mesh. What does it mean constant mesh? It means they are connected. It means that if one rotating, definitely it will rotate. Shaft gear A will rotate as well. Gear A is K to the shaft number two, this horizontal rate shaft. It is K to it, fix it to it. So what does it mean this? It means that if gear A rotating, the entire shaft will be rotating. So if the second shaft, which shaft two, we give it a name as shaft two, if you remember, this is shaft two. When shaft two rotates, the other gears, which are nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14, all of them are K to the shaft. What does it mean K? It means they are fixed and connected to the shaft. So if this shaft two is going to rotate, all of these gears, they're gonna be rotating. And this is what is happening in the animation, right? Once one, gear one is rotating, it's gonna give rotation to gear eight because of the constant mesh. Then eight, once it rotates, it's gonna give rotation to the shaft two. And since the other gears are K to the same shaft, so all gears are rotating. The shaft and gears, everything is rotating. In the meanwhile, gear nine is connected to gear two as constant mesh. So what does it mean this? It means that gear nine, if it rotates, it's gonna give rotation to gear two. It means that gear two is going to rotate as well. And this is what, what is seen in the animation. Gear 10 is connected to three, so both are rotating, because 10 is rotating. 11 is connected to four, and 12 is connected to five, and 13 is connected to six, and 14 is connected to 15, is connected to uh, 60, uh, seven. All of them are rotating, right? So as you can see, this explains why in this animation, all of these gears are rotating, why? because of the constant mesh between them. And this is because all of the gears, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, are k to their shaft. k fix it to that shaft. So once anyone, anyone rotates, it's gonna give rotation to the others through the rotation of the shaft. Make sense? And in the meanwhile, it's gonna give rotation to the other gears who should be mounted over the shaft number three. Make sense? Now let us discuss another thing. Who is the driver, who is the driven? To know which, we said that any cable or pair of gears, one of them it should be the driver, the second one is gonna be the driven. To know who is the driver, who is the driven, this, you have to start from the source of power. You have to start to read the mechanism starting from the engine. So if we start from the engine and investigate the motion, this crankshaft is rotating. It's gonna give rotation to the flywheel. The clutch is connected. It's gonna give rotation to shaft one. Shaft one is gonna give rotation to gear one. Then one is gonna give rotation to eight. So what does it mean this? This mean it mean, this means gear one is the driver. Gear eight is it's driven. We said that for any bear that is constant men, mesh, one is driver, the second is gonna be driven. So one is driver to eight. It is the driven for one. Once it is going to rotate, it's gonna give rotation to all of these gears. So just move with the motion. So the motion comes from the engine through one, then eight, so driver driven, driver driven. That gonna give the motion to the shaft two. Then shaft two should give motion to shaft three. So shaft two or any gear, any gear, from shaft two, it should be driver to the other gear on shaft three, because the motion comes from shaft one, then two, then it's going to three, to give to the wheels. Make sense? So it means that 
Shaft gear A is a driver to gear two. Uh, gear nine is a driver to gear two. Gear 10 is a driver to gear three. Gear 11 is a driver to gear four. And so on, 12 is a driver to five, 13 is driver to six, 14 is driver to 15, then 15 driver to seven. Because the motion, it is not direct from 14 to seven, no, it is through 15. So we have 14 is driver to 15, and then 15 is driver to seven. Make sense? This is how the motion is going. You got it? So we do have drivers, we define the drivers and the driven of all of this gear. So going back here to this figure again, which still the same mechanism. We agreed that one is driver to eight, nine driver to two, 10 driver to three, 11 driver to four, and so on. As we mentioned, we should have one input, one output. So for example, for shaft two, which one of these gears that located over shaft two, that it will be counted as input to the motion, who's gonna give motion to this shaft two, and who's one or ones that could be counted as output. The motion comes to shaft, to shaft T, uh, two through only one gear, which is eight. One gives eight and gives rotation of shaft two. For some reason, if you disconnected the clutch, Shaft one, it will, it will not rotate, right? It's not rotating. So gear one, it will not rotate. Gear eight, it will not rotate. Gear two will not rotate. Nothing is going to move. Make sense? So the gear eight is the input to shaft two, or the power comes to shaft two through gear eight. So we're gonna count gear eight. This is like the input gear. This is the input to shaft two. Remember that the, we said for any shaft, it should have only one input, and this is the only input that we could have for shaft two. And it should have only one output at the same instant of time, at the same instant of time that you receive power and give power from one and one. So how about the inputs, the, the output? The output, so the shaft one, shaft two, is gonna take power from shaft one through one and eight, then it's gonna give power to shaft three and speed to shaft three through either shaft gear nine and ten, uh, nine or 10 or 11 or 12 or 13 or 14. So there are three, how many possible outputs? Because the eight is the input. The other gears, any one of them could serve, can serve as output. But we cannot, take output from two gears at any instant, at the same time. No, it can, uh, we allow, are allowed to take output from only one of them. And this explains why we do have first gear, second gear, third gear. We cannot take the power from multiple gears at once. We have to take it from only one by shifting gears. You got it? So. Gear eight is the input to gear shaft two, then shaft two is gonna give to shaft three through either nine or 10 or 11 or 12 or 13 or 14. Every one of these gears is gonna give a different speed and different motion to the car. This explains why we don't have five speeds and there is the reverse gear in the car. So how many outputs? This is output one. Let us give it a name like output one. And this is output two, this is output three, this is output four, this is output five, which is gear 13, and 14 is gonna output R. This is the reverse gear. This explains, this means that this transmission, it has five speed and one reverse. Why I said that 14 is reverse, I'm going to explain this point, and why I said nine it is first, or in general, Forget about the names. In general, we have five speed, one reverse. The lowest speed, the smallest speed is known as the first gear. The first gear, this is the lower speed and the highest torque. All the time, the speed and the torque, they do have inverse or reverse relation. If the speed is decreasing, the torque is going to increase and vice versa. So if you need high torque, and we have explained this thing in case that you're driving the car up to the hill, going up, 
driving through a hill. It means that you need more torque and power to push the car to drive that hill. It means that you have to slow down the speed or shift to the first gear. The first gear is the highest torque, but the lowest speed. The second gear, it, is, it has a good torque, but higher speed. But and it's torque lower than the first gear and so on. So as you increase the shift or the gear, you are increasing the speed but decreasing the torque. You got it? So forget about the torque, let us focus about the speed. So the first gear is, no, is commonly known as the first gear. This is the lowest speed. The second gear is the second speed, the third gear, the fourth gear, the fifth. Then you have the reverse. So which one, so in general, we do have one input, forget about, so these are the input side. This is input. And these are the outputs, right? So we do have 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Everyone is driver to the other gear on shaft 3. So for example, for example, if you connected 9 to 2, they already connected, right? It is constant mesh. It means that nine, once it rotates, once the shaft two rotates, nine is going to rotate, two is going to rotate, it's gonna give rotation to shaft three based on the speed ratio between nine and, and two. The speed that any gear gives depends on the diameter of the gear. As you change the diameter, you're already changing the speed that you could receive through that gear or through these two gears. Any gears, two gears, there is driver and driven. So if you change the diameter, you're changing the speed that you could receive through these two gears. You got it? So the speed depends on the diameters, the size, and the number of tooth as well of these gears. But forget about the number of tooth, just focus on the size for now. So as you can see, the smallest of them all is nine. Then 10 is a little bit bigger than nine. 11 is more bigger, 12 more, 13 more bigger, forget about 14. Who, which one of them gives the lower speed, which one gives the highest speed? The speed depends on the diameter of the driver. If the driver is small, it gives a lower speed. As you increase the diameter of the driver, the speed is going to increase. So what does it mean this? Who is the smallest of all of these drivers? We agreed that nine is a driver to two, 10 driver to three, 11 driver to four and so on. So all nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, all of them are drivers. Forget about 14. 10, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 are driver. Which one of the smaller, the smallest one, the smallest one is nine. Nine, this gives the lower speed, the lowest speed. This is the first gear. Why? The driver is the smaller one. So the, as you decrease the diameter and the size of the driver, you are decreasing the speed. But as you increasing the driver, you're already increasing the speed. You got my point? So this depends on the diameter of the driver itself, whatever. It is small or big. If the driver is small, you're already decreasing the speed. If the driver is uh, big with a bigger diameter, you are increasing the, the, uh, the speed. As long as you can see, it is just for this system, there are some other measures, but this is for this system, as long as the center distance is constant. Forget about this detail, but anyway, take it this way. Consider it this way. So if I ask you, which one of these five gears is gonna give you the first gear? Nine. You have to shift to nine. You have to take the motion through nine. If you would like to shift to the second gear, you have to take the motion through 10. If you would like to shift to number uh, to third gear, you have to take it through 11. As you can see, the diameter increases. Why? Because the third of them, in terms of diameter, is 11. The fourth speed is gonna be through the 12. The fifth speed is gonna be through the 13. Why the 13 is the highest speed? Why that speed? The biggest diameter. You got it? So, you're gonna have one gear that gives you input to the shaft. You have to receive the motion from only one of the five gears. Either 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, depending on what, depending on which gear that you're already shifting to. Make sense? So, 
So how we could shift for between the different gears? As I mentioned, this comes through the clutch, but we have three clutches and we can control their connection through the stick. So if you slide the stick to slide this clutch to connect to gear two, it means that gear three is disconnected, gear four is disconnected, five, six, seven. It means that the clutch between six and seven, it should be in the middle. Disconnected will be, uh, is not connected to seven or six. The same thing, the clutch, the second clutch, it should be in the middle between seven and eight. But the only clutch that, that is connected is this clutch between two and three, and it is already connected to two. This is gonna give you the first shift, the first gear of the car. You're gonna find all the other gears, three, four, five, six, and seven, 10, 11, all of the gears are rotating inside the mechanism, but they do have zero contribution to the speed of the motion. They just rotating for nothing. The only one that contributes to the motion are gear nine and two, driver and driven. And accordingly, the shaft three is going to rotate based on the speed that depends on the diameters of these two gears. This is gonna give the lowest speed. So simply, how we could shift to the first gear, your objective is just to move the stick, to slide the clutch between gears two and three to, to connect the clutch to gear two. Once you connect the clutch to gear two, this shaft number three is gonna take its speed of rotation depending on the speed ratio between nine and two or depending on gears nine and two. How about if you would like to shift to the second gear? Simply move the stick to slide the clutch to disconnect two, and then connect the clutch to gear three. This is gonna give you another gear, another speed. But keep in mind that you're just still moving the clutch two to three between these two gears, and you didn't move any one of these two clutches. How about if you need the third speed? This clutch, it should be the middle, in the middle. This clutch, it should be in the middle, but this one is gonna is going to be slide and connected to gear four to give you the third speed. How about if you need the fourth one, slide this clutch to the right to connect to five. This is gonna give you the fourth speed. How about if I need the fifth speed, these two gears, this gear, it should be disconnected. It means it should be in the middle. This gear, it should be disconnected. It should be in the middle. But this gear is going to shift to the left to connect with gear six to give you this the fifth speed that comes through gear 13 and six. Why 13 give the fifth speed the highest speed? Because there is the bigger diameter. Make sense? How about if you need the reverse? It, be, it became clear, right? Reverse it means that you're gonna need, need to shift, just slide, keep these two disconnected, slide this clutch to the right to connect with gear seven, this is gonna give you the reverse gear. So remember that the speed, this indicates that this shaft number three is going to rotate as long as one of these three clutches is connected to one of the gears over shaft three, or in other words, it is not necessary for shaft three to rotate if all the gears are rotating. So you do have in, the, in this animation, all gears are rotating, but this doesn't mean that shaft three is rotating. In this case, shaft three, three is not rotating. And remember that shaft three is connected to the propeller shaft that is connected to the differential. It means that the car is not moving. Why is not, this is the neutral, this is the N. One of the lines, one of the shifts over the stick, there is N, which is neutral. It means that the car, it is not moving. While the engine is working, the transmission is working, all gears inside the transmission are rotating, but the car is not moving. Why? Because you disconnecting the clutches. All the clutches are in the middle. So the shaft three will not rotate. But shaft three, to rotate, it requires shifting only one of these three gears to either right or left to take this speed based on the rotation of these different gears. Uh, every couple of gear has different speed of rotation. As you can see, this is very slow. 
in comparison to this one, even in the animation. You got it? Like 13, 6, it is very fast. This is a little bit slower. Slower, slower, very slow. So this is first gear, second gear, third speed, fourth speed, fifth speed. This is the reverse. And I'm going to explain it. So now we are in the neutral case. The car is not moving. To move the car, you have to slide this, use the stick. After you press the clutch, you have to connect the motion from the engine first. Then you're gonna slide the stick to connect the clutch with gear two. This is gonna give you the first gear. Once you connect the clutch to gear two, the clutch is going to rotate. Once this clutch is going to rotate, it's gonna give rotation to shaft three. Then shaft three is connected to the propeller shaft, as shown here, that is gonna give rotation to the differential, is going to move the car based on the speed of this couple of gears. How about if you would like to shift to the second gear? Do the same. Press on the barrel of the clutch. You have to disconnect the motion. You have to dis disconnect any new pushing that comes from the engine. Press over the barrel, then slide this clutch to the right. You're gonna give it rotation and then give rotation to shaft three based on the speed of rotation of these two couple of gears, 10 and three. If you would like to have the third speed, disconnect this one, but connect the one between four and five to the left to be connected to four. And in that case, you are giving rotation to it, to the, this clutch, which then gonna give rotation to shaft three to rotate the wheel based on the speed of this couple of gears, 11 and four, and so on. Make sense? So this is simply how we could shift gears, how we could give the first gear, the second gear, the third gear for such a transmission system, which is very common, by the way, for many of most, most of the sedan cars, small cars, they are using very similar uh, transmission system. Here I'm talking about the manual car, not the automatic. The transmission of the automatic car is more complicated, it is totally different, even the clutch is already inside the automatic transmission system. So it is very complicated thing. But here, we could understand this manual car, transmission system, make sense? The last thing that I'd like to explain here is the reverse, how this reverse gear is working. Why would you have three? The reverse, it works based on this concept. Something that you should, un should understand is that any two gears, any two gears meshed together they should be rotating in two opposite directions. If this one rotates clockwise direction, the other one is going to rotate counterclockwise direction. Any two gears mesh together, one is gonna push the other one, one is driver, the second is gonna be driven, both are rotating in two opposite directions. So as you can see, nine is meshed to two. So nine rotates and two rotates in opposite direction that is opposite to two, to nine and 10 and three rotates opposite in, an, in a direction that is opposite to 10, and four is opposite to 11, five is opposite to 12, six is opposite, opposite to 13, but seven is opposite to 15, and 15 is opposite to 14, it means that 14 and seven rotating in the same direction. That's why we are incorporating or adding a third gear in the middle. This third gear, it is not small gear, it is a big gear, by the way, but the rest of the gear is not seen. If you try, you do have gear seven, and there should be gear 15 and gear, gear 14. From this angle, this is known as engineering view. From this view, we, we are not seeing the entire gear 15, but we can see the whole gear 15 if we're gonna look at it from this side. You got it? So if I decided to draw it from this side, these three gears, 7, 15, and 14, will be look like in this way. Like this is going to be 7, and then you're going to have here 14, and the 15 will be working and connected to both from the side, comes from the side. This is 15. If you're going to look at it from this angle, it will be seen very small. Why? This doesn't mean gear 15 is a small gear. No, it is a big gear as much as the other ones. Even in this case, all the gears in 14, 15, 7, in, in, in the conventional case, they are preferred to having the same diameter, to not to change the speed. Anyway, forget about this thing for now, but 
they are very similar. They do have almost the same sizes, the same diameters. Make sense? So all of these gears, all of these gears, who are having all of these diameters, or almost, as I mentioned, having almost the same diameters, 15 is coming from the back. That's why if you try to look at it from this side, it will be seen like it is a small. No, it is a complete, but you just seeing this portion. You just seeing this part of this 15 gear. So 14 rotates in this direction, for example. So 15 will rotate in the opposite direction. Then seven is gonna rotate opposite to 15. Remember that seven is not connected to 14. Seven is connected just to 15. So the motion comes from 14 to 15, then to seven. So that's why it is like a group. This type of mechanism is known as reversing mechanism. We are implementing these gears to give us the reverse, to move the car backward, and instead of moving the car forward. All if you already connecting the clutches, any one of these clutches, to all of these gears, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, the car is going to move forward with a certain speed that depend on which gear that you already connecting with. But if you slide this clutch button, there is a condition that these two clutch should be disconnected. And if you slide this one to the right, you already reversing the direction of motion of the car and the car is going to move backward. This is the reverse gear. Why? Because of this concept. We said that any two gears mesh together, they're going to rotate opposite to each other. So 14 is going to rotate opposite to 15 and 15 rotates opposite to 7. It means 7 rotates the same direction of 14. But all the other gears, it means this indicate that if you connect through 14, the shaft 3 will rotate in a direction that is opposite to the direction if you connect to any one of the other gear. Why? Because 9 is opposite to 2. 10 is opposite to 3. But here, 14 and 7, they do have the same direction. So this gives two directions. One, the, these gears, if you connect through these gears, you're already moving the car forward. If you connect through 14, 15, 7, this is the reverse gear. Make sense? So this is in detail how this mechanism is working and how we are shifting between all of these different gears for this typical example of this transmission system. But remember, this is not the only transmission system that exists in cars. There are so many designs. And every company you could say it has, it has its own design for the transmission system. They even competing in, in, in creating and inventing new things in the transmission system. Like definitely the transmission in, in, in PMW is different than the Mercedes is different than any other car. Okay, so it, 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 it is different, but it works the same way here as long as we are talking about the manual car. So this is also a typical shape of a transmission system. All of these are different gears. This is one gear, another gear, another gear, another gear, another gear, 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 oh, multiple gears, as you can see. And all of these are helical gears. Some of them are, are uh, spark gear. This gear is a spark gear because it's tooth, it is straight. But this is helical gear, helical gear, helical gear, helical, helical, helical gear. These two are helical. So we do have only couple of spark gears and the rest and the others are helical gear. It means that in the same mechanism, we could use different types of gears. These things, golden things in the middle, this lever pushes right and left these clutches. So these things here in the middle, this is a clutch. This is another clutch. This is not a clutch. This gives a slide to this little small gear to reverse. So this is the reversing gear. And as you move the other two clutches, you switching between the different speeds of this car. Make sense? So this also another animation that shows how we could shift the clutches. This is how the clutches are sliding right or left to connect this. So this is these are two helical gears that gives one speed. These are two other helical gears that gives another speed. These two couple of gears gives another speed, couple of gears gives another speed, and we're just sliding the clutching between the, the clutches between them to switch between these four speeds. So this only four speeds. This is one speed through this couple, another speed through the second couple, third speed through the other couple, and speed from the other couple. 
Which one is the first, which one is the second? This depends on the driver. Who is the driver if we just gonna give numbers? So this definitely is gonna be gear one that is connected to the shaft that takes the motion from the engine. So the motion from the engine comes from this side and that this gives to eight uh, or two, for example, and this is three and this is four and this is five that is connected here to six and seven and eight. So gear two is driven to one. This is gonna be the input to this shaft number two. Then you can give the motion through either three or four or five. So this gives the multiple speed that you already have. As you can see, this clutch could connect to the left or uh, uh, this, this, this one can, I'm sorry, to the right only. It means that it can take motion from the right and that's it. There is no left, but this one it can slide right or left or the middle. So this clutch has three positions. This clutch has three positions bending on the, step, the stick, but this one has two positions only, either in the middle to disconnect it, to be disconnected, or to slide to the right to take speed from this gear. So we have here, yeah, I think, yes, so there is neutral. The neutral, it means that these two will be in the middle, and then you're gonna have one first gear because this is the smallest one so this is going to give the first gear and this is going to give the second gear then you're going to have the third gear yeah i think this one is sliding left as well so this is have three position sliding to the left to take the speed from gear one through gear one and two that's why we do have here uh, four gears no i or i think is adding something here but anyway it is not clear exactly but in all cases, it works in this way, that we have to figure out the mechanism, we have to figure out the speed, and we start from the motion of the, the engine itself, going back to the different gears, which one is the driver and the driver, then we can figure out the speed. This thing that shows up here, as I said, yeah, this one has only two positions, either disconnected or slide to the left, and this gives one speed, second, third. How about the fourth speed? The, the thing that shows up, uh, shows up here in the, in the side, these are other two gears that could be, that already, if you're already disconnecting these two clutches and they already connected, we're already ending up with the fourth gear, okay? So as you can see, these two things are showing up when this four uh, is highlighted, okay? In that way. So, it's gonna be in this way. So it means that there is another clutch here, as I said. So this clutch has only two positions, disconnected or slide to the right. This one has three positions. So left, right, or the middle, or disconnected, in case that it is in the middle. This clutch, also it can be disconnected or connected, two positions only like this one. So if you connect, if you need the first speed, so this is the first gear, this is the second gear, this is the third gear, this gives the fourth gear. Okay, this gives the fourth gear. So if you already disconnecting this one and connecting this one, you're already taking the first speed, the second speed, the third speed, then you're gonna have the fourth speed or, or something. There is fifth speed that should be somewhere. It means that if there is animation, there are some other components that should be added. Yeah, as I said, there is another cover here that gives the fifth speed. But this one here, this gear is, if you switch, so if you just compare this one, this clutch has one side. The other side of the clutch is this one, is this sky gear. This sky gear, when it slides to the left, this gives the reverse gear. So if you're moving to the left, you're already connecting the sky gear to the green, to the red, to give the reverse motion. So this explains this another form or another shape, which is very similar, by the way, to this mechanism but the option or the concept by using the clutches and moving and sliding them will be a little bit different than this one for sliding these gears, okay? This is another mechanism that gives, I think, four speeds. So as you can see, we do have gear one and two, three, four, and this one, two, three, four, but in Latin words. So if you connect gear one to one, this gives one speed, and two to two gives another speed, Three to three gives another speed. Four to four gives four speed so far. And then if you slide this R between 
yeah, if you slide this R to the right, you already giving the reverse gear. So this is the reverse, this is the R, and this R other for spe uh, speed. So this gearbox or transmission gives us four speed and one reverse motion, okay? As you can see here, we are not sliding catches. We are sliding gears themselves. This is what typically used and preferred in truck cars, big cars and trucks. We mean, mean, many of the cases we are sliding. We are sliding gears, not clutches, as this small mechanism. And this small, this mechanism, sliding clutches, we basically using them in small cars, but in big cars, we are sliding these gears. So this type of mesh, it is not a constant mesh. But here we are using constant mesh. These two are constant mesh. These two are constant mesh, constant mesh, constant mesh. But this is sliding mesh. Sliding mesh, it means that the gear itself is going to slide right or left. Like this one, this is sliding left, slide right, middle, left, has three positions. This one also has three positions, middle, right, left. So we are sliding the gears. This mechanism is known as a sliding mesh mechanism. Make sense? So this is simply, I hope things are clear. This is another design of a transmission system that use also for manual car for changing the speed. The good thing of this one that we are using this is special coupling thing. So this is like positive action, two shafts, that one shaft is going to slide. We are sliding the shaft itself. So as you can see in this mechanism, we are sliding clutches to change the speed, to shift gear. Here we are sliding gears. This is what many of the cases used in the truck cars. We have another option that we can even shift and slide the shaft itself to shift the gear. We can slide the shaft to shift the gear. As already given here, if this is like gear one and this is gear two that takes, this is the engine side, and this is the first shaft that gives one to two, gives rotation to this shaft, these two gears are rotating. So we could slide to connect through this gear and this gear. This is gonna give one speed. This gear and this gear gives another speed. Or even you can completely push this shaft to connect and take this bit directly through one to three. This is shaft number three, remember, that is going to be connected to the propeller shaft and then the wheels. And this is shaft number two. So if you decided to take this bit through this gear and this gear, you have to shift this gear to be connected to this one and shift this gear to be connected to this one. Either one, you cannot take the motion at, from two gears at once, only one at, at a time. Or the other option is that you're gonna exclude two from the the story. Like we gonna we won't gonna have any op, uh, contribution from two. We can directly connect three shaft three to one. So we're gonna take the same speed as one. So from one to three directly, it won't gonna go through two. But all of these mechanisms, like this mechanism, for example, and this one, like this mechanism that we explain, we are taking the motion from one. Shaft one, then it's going to go two, then to three. So it comes from one through two to three. But now in this mechanism, we are taking the motion in this speed. This is highest speed, this is highest speed output. Okay, this is the highest speed. This is the, first, the third gear. We are taking the motion directly from the shaft one. It will not be through shaft two. Make sense? So this is a mechanism. So, as I said, there are lots of different mechanisms that are used in the transmission system. I hope things are clear through this video. The objective of today's lecture or video is just to explain to you, to give you an idea how these transmission systems in the manual cars are working, how we could shift between these gears. This is some of the things that I believe that you should understand as a mechanical or even an industrial engineer or an engineer in general, at least to know the thing that you're driving every day, how it works. Okay, so this is the objective of this video and this is what we covered. I hope things again are clear uh, and that's it for today's video. So thank you so much and see you in the next video. Thank you.